Hello, hello. <laughs> I'm here. See, I'm really here. Oh, sorry, I'm late. But we're here. Uh, the day, the morning just kind of like snuck up on me. It flew by. We had some orders to take care of. Um, Wilbur, <laughs> let me get my camera so nothing's set. I'm sorry. Yes, we are all staying safe. So bear with me as I kind of get things set up and ready. And so we're here. <laughs> now, how about if I get our cards? I was all preset for this morning. I was going to be ready on time and uh, it didn't happen. So, but I do have my coffee. Take that off now. So today we're going to just play with some cards and I didn't put anything like pre together because I just want to make them all with you because a lot of you are, I think like me, you don't do a, you're, you're not a basic card maker. And I didn't really start out as a card maker. I, stay, I started with layouts. So I just was going to do it from beginning to end with you. But I have to have some coffee. <laughs> I hope you guys are all staying safe too. We are going to make one Christmas card. And if you have any of your leftover high karma paper i'm going to show you how easy it is just to use up your scraps because this was made basically from scraps and you know i still have grandsons here and if they don't go outside and play this grandma's going to start twitching at the neck okay <laughs> love the grandkids but oh my lord Let me breathe. So just get your, your supplies. So some of the supplies I want to show you. This is literally from my stash, leftover flowers and dots. And what I do is I kind of put them together. This one was the fall color, so I put these all together. And now I was able to just grab that stash. Well, I'm going to get started as I'm kind of drinking some coffee here and showing it. And then I grabbed this, which is just leftover. Actually, Disney stuff, but the dots will go great with this collection. Hi, Sharon. And I'm, I, I literally had this from this collection, if you guys remember. This was absolutely adorable, and it is called Christmas, just Christmas. And literally, these were the pieces left over, and these are also what I'm going to use to make our card. And I had a couple of the cut-aparts. So instead of throwing these away, you know, this was really the only uh, Christmas, Christmas collection. I had and I had some other cut apart so I'll just have to find them because I decided I didn't want to use this one again so literally just get out some of your scraps and then this was one of my favorite fall lines the fall market again I just grabbed scraps so we're going to be working from that to create our cards today. There's some of the card stock that I'll be using. And then if you have any of the tags from <laughs> every, everything out of Graphic 45, I had these. So I'm going to use one of those. And what we're going to create is first, uh, let's do our Christmas card. No, we won't do the Christmas card, but let me show you. I've got to take there. So this is one of the one Christmas card we'll create, but we wanted, we did Christmas cards in January. So you can go back and look, we did the birthday ones and we're going to do fall. And I did this little five and a half. Uh, it's the five and a half by, or yeah, five and a half by four and a half card with the squares on the front. Again, just leftover flowers from the stash. So now we'll have our fall cards. So we're going to create this one. And this is the one. So if you have graphic 45 tags, and I'll give you measurements if you use different size tags that you can use. Because these are fun uh, to use up your tags with. Because sometimes we'll have one or two extra, and you just don't know what to do with them. So let's make a card. You can also put it in an envelope. And the last one. 
I went bigger with the six by six card. And now I'll have my fall cards all done. And we'll be ready to come fall. Again, these are just pieces and parts. So, like, I don't have another butterfly, so I won't have a butterfly on here. I'll just take something else. So, things will be a little different. And I'm going to show you some tips. Like, this die that I cut, I'm going to show you. If you've got a shop vacuum, who has a shop vacuum? Let's see some thumbs up in your craft studio. I have some. I mean, I have one. I love my shop vacuum. My shop vacuum is like one of my crafting tools. I consider it a crafting tool. So let's get started with this card. No, let's get started with this one. I love making this one. So I need to get started with our base. And I'm going to use the brown again. Hi, Tricia. And you know, this is what I'm going to do. This is going to create my smaller one and my six by six card. So I'm just going to take my 12 by 12 and I'm gonna score it at six. Um, your Dyson handheld is gonna to work too. You're gonna to love it. So I'm just gonna fold my whole thing over because I know I want the four and a half inch card And then I want a six by six card. So this one, it's going to be four and a half wide and it's five and three quarters long. So I'm just going to put this in my cutter. I'm just going to cut it at six. So that'll be my six by six card. And you can have it come open from the bottom or you can come to the side, so it'll work for either side. Now this one, make sure the direction you want, because I want it to open at the right. So I need it to be five and three quarters long. Four and a half wide. This for me is easier than trying to remember the eight and a quarter, you know, your length and your width. And then I do keep these because they're great for matting. And there's our card. I know the artisan brown is so beautiful. And then we need to have the base. And I did use on this one, I just used the ivory. So I just, or the linen color. I cut a bunch down to eight and a half by 11 the other day. And we want to cut that at four and a quarter. By five and a half. And then the fun part. Let's see that now. That is your perfect size for your three by four card. So you're just going to have that second piece that you'll use. And then this will fit on here with a nice brown border. But we want to create those, the little squares. And there's 12 of these. And this is where you can go through all of these little pieces of your paper. Because it really doesn't matter what they, I want to keep that one because that's a great sentiment there. Just a bunch of different ones that you have little pieces and parts to. That one, so I'll probably use that one. I don't really want to use these cut aparts. I, I do pull the cut aparts so that we have them. Those are our sentiments. Okay. So I'm going to use front and back. Front front and back. So when I use this one, you'll kind of want to cut it so that it is strategically placed. And they are one and a quarter inch square. So let's just play for a minute on our cutter.
so one and a quarter. And what I'm wanting is one of the boxes. So I'm going to cut it off there. Or one, they're crates. Sorry, they're crates. And let's cut it again at one and a quarter. So one of my crates will be in the square. And then I'm going to use the back side at one and a quarter. So one and a quarter by one and a quarter. And we need 12 of these. And you can do them. It would be pretty to do it just pop. You know, this might be really cute to do. This one I did one. One was totally different. Maybe I will try something here. That's what's fun about cards. So maybe we'll go pumpkin and then polka dots. Let's see. You know, I'm going to do that. So what I'm going to do on mine, you can have yours all different. I'm going to have mine all the same. Well, two different. But we want 12 of them. So, how are you guys who's got homeschoolers home? I think everybody <laughs> get them on the cutter. Tell them you need to cut all your scraps up into one and a quarter by one and a quarter inch squares. This is going to be pretty. And that will keep some little hands busy for a while. Now, if you want to make a bigger card, you just increase your squares by a quarter of an inch, but you'll want them to be square. So one and a half by one and a half or vice versa. If you make a bigger card, five by seven, etc., or six by six. That'll be very cool. Oh, I went too big. But let's not cut that little pumpkin off. That'll look really cool. And then in, I could use a cut apart. That might be too big. So pick out the cut apart. The thing is, I was, you need a cut apart that you can cut down. So we may go to our sticker sheet. I mean, yeah, I'm going to go with the sticker sheet on this one. You're cut apart. Remember, you've got a smaller card here because I cut this down to like three and a half by three and a half on the cut apart. So just pick a cut apart. I could cut this one down if I wanted, but let's go with that. So I'm going to put my card aside and I'm just going to build on the base right now because I'm going to ink all, all those little squares now we're going to ink and there is no fast forward. So you'll just have to ink along with me. Not having any long nails don't not help. Get a hold of stuff. Hi, Jennifer. And you want to know why I was late? Because Wilbur. Okay, that's all I need to say, isn't it? Because of Wilbur. Every bed that I made, I chased behind Wilbur because he undid them. Does anybody have a beagle? Hi, Rosie. Happy Easter. Can anybody tell me why this beagle wants the beds unmade when I make them? 
anybody. <laughs> I don't know why he unmakes my beds. Oh, please, that sweet, innocent boy. He is sweet, but he's not innocent. For those of you that think he's innocent, you need to be smacked. <laughs> Okay, we're just going to lay things out. He thinks he's playing. Wow, let me tell you, he's going to. Oh, does your baby like her bed messy too? I love these colors. So we do have to spend some time here. Um, hi, why are you, can we? Ha why are you asking somebody about the video? Okay, let's just get everything laid out. They're not going to be laid out perfectly. Like I said, just kind of just find a starting point. Hi, Vanessa. That's okay. I was late too. <laughs> In fact, I just got here a few minutes ago. And if you are, I need to come to Indiana. Why do I need to come to Indiana? <laughs> okay, once we get these sort of where you know you're going to start, then we can go ahead and we can start laying them down. And I do try to leave them on as I'm working. <laughs> you don't have to stay after school? No, you don't have to stay after school. Not at all. Wow, Heather, you're moving on that baby album. Heather is using, I think, the December Daily for her baby album, aren't you? Okay, the main thing is we keep things straight. It's the only thing with these little squares. And this is why I don't build it on the card. I like to build it here. And then just try and keep your rows straight. Start our second row. Okay. 
I would say, yay, it's Friday. But you know what? Every day feels like Friday. <laughs> How many of you are starting to feel like every day feels like Friday? Me. I don't know which day is which, to be honest with you. This, you know, um, Kelly, you were saying about Halloween cards. This is this is cute to do with your Halloween cards. And this is really a great way to use up for those of you that don't like to get rid of your little scraps. Yes, yeah, we don't like to get rid of our little scraps. Hi, Nancy. This is a good way to use them. It's Groundhog Day. I'm confused. It, it's ground. Jennifer. Oh, Jennifer. Oh, the movie. I was going to say, Jennifer, you're getting me all confused here. <laughs> you're right. It's Groundhog Day. Kelly, I do too. Oh, Tama Lee, yeah. Score tape sheets for your covers are the bomb. It um, it sure does save about 20 minutes. You know what? I, I'm one of those people, Jennifer. I don't see a lot of movies. And you know what? I But I do remember seeing Groundhog Day. I couldn't tell you exactly what was in it. I, I don't remember movies either. Isn't that funny? Unless... It was something like Forrest Gump or The King and I, you know. <laughs> I'm I'm just weird. And I don't watch TV. I know, Heather. It's my old age. You'll be here one day, too, and you'll have to take care of me. Well, you know, like they say, it's kind of good when you can't remember because then you have new friends all over again every day because you can't remember the one from yesterday. Hi, Irene. How are you? Okay. Okay. Now you notice I've got my squares down and even if they're a little off, that's okay. I'm going to turn this over. Make sure if you're using glue that you really do do that because see it'll flatten it, make it nice and flat. And now I'm okay with putting this on our card base. <laughs> You'll take, and you can even... Okay, did you guys see that? That's really weird. It was spinning by itself. See? Watch. That is really weird. I thought there was a magnet there. Oh. Okay. There must be some static or something. Because that was really odd. We can ink the edges of this, too, if you want. Oh, you're welcome. I don't know if it's much talent, but it's it's something for us to do during this time. I'm just doing a light edge on the linen. Kind of like it. It's not very bright. It is. Why? It, it's not doing it now. You guys, some of you saw that. It just turned my paper around. Kind of like the broom standing up. Oh, maybe this is a good sign. Oh, maybe the world's going to start turning again. I'm just kidding. Oh, and you know what? We will have the gold. Not just gold, Pamela, but I've ordered all of the shimmers of the 12 by 12 cardstocks. They will not be sold in packs, though. They're going to be sold sim single sheets, and I will... Be doing a, 
I'll do a show, a live show when all the shimmers get here. Tuesday, I think Tuesday. It was dancing. So just make sure with your wet adhesive that you are spreading it out. Hi, Ta Hi Tanya. You missed it. We had some possession going on here. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and do the inside, which was just a piece of cardstock. And I cut it down to just the four inches. You can cut it any size, but I'm going to do four inches for my innards by five. has a messed up corner I'm gonna take an eighth of an inch off because I just want somewhere nice to be able to stamp or to write the sentiment and on this one I am going to use a stamp it's a fall card but it also needs a stamp and I'm using my brand new beagle stamp sent by Pamela look at this And I'm going to do it in brown. Oh, I know. Getting paid in the thing you love to do most is the best. So I am going to just grab my instruction sheet here. I want to test this brow. Oh, it's going to be so cute. Because he's wearing a sweater. And I thought this would be so perfect on a fall card. So if you've got a stamp or something you want to use, I'm going to bring it up a little because I still want a sticker on there. Look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. I hope you got yourself one too, Pamela, for your beagles. Look how cute. You know, fall really is my favorite time of year. And I'm looking more and more forward to it this year than anything because of our spring just being a mess. Let's take a couple of pumpkins and put down here with our beagle. I'm going to cover the end of his sweater. Oh, good. Going to just kind of overlap those. And then I, it, it just, when you use a stamp like this that's one of your favorites, it really personalizes your cards to you. So anybody that opens this will know it's Wilbur. So that is going to be the inside of the card. And then I saved, you probably saw all the little bits and pieces. <coughs> that I can use for the inside. And actually, I just want something that's, there we go, adds a little bit of color to the inside. Exactly, Kelly. My favorite color also is fall. It doesn't matter what color, but the colors of fall are just amazing. It's almost like I come alive. You know, that's pretty too, even using that back part of the cut aparts. And you really could just stamp another sentiment if you wanted. But I am stamping just the Wilbur. And I am using the archival ink. Because the difference with the archival ink or the hybrid, most of you um, pretty much already know that. Um, but they're permanent. So they're permanent. At, they're not going to smear. And that's, that's why this is a good one. 
and we used um, we used archival link when we were doing our multimedia in Vermont. I learned a lot from Bonnie, one of our teachers, on it. So that'll be the inside. And for the outside, then here I did remember I used a cut apart that I was able to cut down to the three and a half by three and a half. Just need to grab some twine. I now have all my ribbons up on a roll, so they're at the other side of my desk. Did the men ever post? No, they didn't. Some of the guys were, yeah, made our other car cards, but the guys didn't post any any nope. Maybe we need to have a Heather. Maybe we need to have a I don't know. My brain's not working. I'll think about it. Give me a minute here. Maybe we need a trick here. Maybe we need more than one sentiment. I think we do on this card. This one was just the one. So remember those little pieces I told you to keep? A challenge. That's what we need is a challenge. And we can win some prizes on scrapbookers. So if you're watching from YouTube, remember, I also have a Facebook group, Country Craft, Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations. And I think we are going to have a challenge because we do have Father's Day, really not too far. And we need to start seeing some masculine cards. Okay, you're going to want... You want some foam tape or your squares for the cards I'm doing today. Foam tape will work too. But I always like to back my stickers. leave a border again perfection is not the word here we're just doing a shadow in the back get rid of the bulk yes I got the sock back from Wilbur and the reason I went live in Scrapworkers to show you that, because actually when he messed up my bed, I didn't realize he was buried in the pillows. And I meant to get him as he jumped or as he was just hiding in there. He was hiding like he was going to attack the next person that walked past him. And I died laughing. And then he went into the next room and tore apart the bed my grandson slept in. And now he's outside playing with the boys. So I'm really thinking Wilbur just wanted somebody to get up and play with him. Yes, I'm using a lot of foam because no, this one is a four and a half by five and a half. So this one's not a five by seven. So Bobby, if you want this to be more of a five by seven, then I would do your inside four and three quarters by six and three quarters. And then your squares, you can go one and I, you might even be able to go two, two, four, six. No, you'll probably go one and a half or one and three fours. So just try cut three and see how many you want. And that's kind of how you figure that out. Now, the only reason I'm going with the stickers. I don't want a cut apart, you know, to cover this whole thing that we just did. But if I don't like this, it just might. I'm 
And then the ribbon may be there in the center. And I'll put some pumpkins down here. So let's try it. Um, Kelly, Wilbur does sleep with us. My husband puts a pillow in the middle in our king size bed because Wilbur kicks like a child. And then I changed my mind again. See, that's the fun thing with cards. We can change our mind. We're going to bring the fall banners in. You can definitely put these on your cardstock. I'm not going to. I'm just going to enamel dot the fall banner directly. Oh, Bobby, that would be a cute. You could, yeah, do it five by seven and put them in your frame. Oh, yeah, that'd be so pretty. I like that. So that is the direction I'm going to go. And if you need to de-stick the back first, you certainly can, but it'll be fine. It's not going to go anywhere with, with your things there. So I went ahead and got a kind of a the rust color of our, what do you call it, twine here that we sell at Country Craft Creations. I'm going to wrap it, let's go four times. And then between, so just wrap it on your fingers. And then we're going to bring it between the two. Or you can definitely use your bow maker. I'm going to slide it off. Hold the two loops down or however you like. And then just pull it tight. So I'm holding the two loops on either side of the knot. Not too tight yet, so I can straighten it up. Okay, now I can pull it tight. Grab, this is where we want to grab our fall bits. Anything that you kept fall. You know, I am just going to dump. I dumped these out at least three or four times making these parts. So we're just going to dump them out again. We'll put them back in as needed. Just so you can see. So these are all just leftover bits, pieces, things that... Um, Sorry, 
I bumped my mouse. I better move it. The leaves were left over from, I think, Prima. You guys might recognize them. You may have some in your stash. And once you start building on it, then you start, you'll start saying like, ooh, I like that. So these were left over from a long time ago. It's kind of nice to just clean out the stash. You know, that one's kind of sticking out far. It may not do well in a card. Sometimes you have to push those centers back in and then flatten it on the back side. Then we can add some pumpkins, different things like that. Once you're happy with it, let's just go ahead and stick it all down. And I like the foam dots because we can stick things behind it. I think these were from the, these definitely were from this year's Fall Prima line, I think. Down the inside. Your art glitter glue will hold your twine just fine. Oh, no. You know what, Sylvia? No, nah, you can't say anything to offend me. I'm, I don't offend very easy. <laughs> I would never hang up on you. I hit my mouse, yeah. Okay, we're going to have to hold this just for a second. There we go. You'll feel it take hold with your art glue. Now these we're going to hold for just a minute. Put things on top. So let me get this guy in here. So I'm going to push him through to... Oh, they just kind of made that center pretty big. So I'm going to take it completely out. I use an enamel dot instead. We'll give this one just a little color. So he'll be just a little different than the other guys. Like I said, these I think were left over from... Oh, now I don't know what line... Maybe it did go with this one. Hmm. Very possible. So let's add a few colors here. Maybe some brown. Always fun to use up our supplies. Okay. And that is all there is to that card. See how easy that was? Again, if you're going to use your cut apart, then I just backed it with the eighth inch around. So that is how you make this one. Oh, <laughs> you're welcome. Yes, and thank you for the human interaction too. We all appreciate it. Now my coffee's cold. And there goes my, sometimes it just goes weird. Okay, let's make this one. This one is a fun one too, because you can take your graphic 45 tags, especially, and if you have the dies, makes these so quick. And then on here, you can add a photo, but your sentiment can go back here. And of course, I'll be doing the Wilbur snap on that one. And let's make the little pocket. So the little pocket can serve as a couple of different things, maybe money. Um, a gift card, or if you're just going to hand this to somebody, but you definitely can make an envelope. So what you want to do, I'm just using these chunky tags or the square tags by Graphic 45. You can use e any of the tags. Now for this size, I cut my cardstock five and three quarters by 11. So just take your Card. You might be using one of the 
normal size ones, measure your card. So this is four and a half, but I'm taking it up to four and three quarters. So I just took it up a quarter inch. And then I'm going to add an inch. So you're going to add one and a quarter inch to the width. That's all. So if your car, if your tag is the, I believe they're five, three eighths. No, they're only four something. Just add an inch and a quarter. So that is how I came up with the sizing. And then you'll want to use the dies if you have your dies. Now, if you don't have your dies, you can still use these. Just cut in the square. But with the dies, I already pre-cut um, these two, which was the Reese. And then I'll use the solid background for the back. But let's go ahead and make, and I'm going to use this. Let's make the um, envelope. And I'm going to show you a couple of different things why I did it at 11. But then you can adjust it as you need. So we're going to cut it once again at five, five and three quarters by 11. Oh yeah. Don't leave your, don't leave. I'd leave the child home because he's old. He, he'll be fine. So we're going to score this at five and a half with the 11 inch at the top and just turn it to the five and three quarter or whichever is your short one at the top. We're just going to score it there. Now, the reason I did it this way, I want to show you, you might not want I made it so there is a little bit on the top. Mine came out. I've got three quarters at the top. So if you want it to have a backing for your tag, then before you do anything else, just cut it off. If you don't, you can leave it. You can leave it just like this. See, and your tag will go all the way in if you just want like the string. But I'm going to actually cut an inch off this time. So you can you can leave it, you can do it, or you can just cut it the correct size. You will just have to watch your scoring. So if you cut it at 10 inches, then you score it. You can still score it at five and a half or four and a half, depending on what side. But now see, I'll have an inch at the top. So I just kind of do that as a standard size, but so this is the part that folds up. This is the backing. So we want to cut off this long edge. You want to cut off the long one. You can put it in your cutter if you want it to be more straight. And if you're good at not going past the score line, I'm not. <laughs> so I'm just staying on the inside of my score mark and I'm just going to cut it straight down. And I'm going to do the same thing to this on the inside of my scoring so that we can wrap that score mark. I have tape on my scissors. I'm just going to fold this down because I don't like to cut these too short. That's what that will look like. So... If you are also, finally, we've gotten all the retreats straightened away. Dates have been changed. So if you are going to the South Carolina retreat, Greenville, just so you guys know, it is on Facebook with the new date. It's been changed to July. Um, this would be really great for your cards. Now, you can also round these corners. And I have my corner punch for this one. And... 
I'm going to deco the edges. Kind of gives it a, a nice touch. And then we're just going to glue these down. Oops. I have a little piece sticking out on the edge, and you'll see it. So we just fix it there. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Our jets are flying out here at Hill Air Force Base. Haven't heard it in a while. It sounds so awesome. I love hearing. Gail, I do not sell these corner punches because they're not, they're, they're really not easy to get a hold of. But you can get these um, mostly, you know, I don't know if they've stopped making a lot of them because I go right on to, um, it's through American Crafts. But they're not easy to find. I've had mine for years and years. But let me see what I can do. So now I have a finished pocket of four and three quarters that will fit my chunky graphic 45 tags. Makes it really quick, really quick gift. But we do want to decorate the other tag. And then you want to measure this front piece. The front piece is four and a half by four and three quarters. So it's four and three quarters wide. So I'm gonna cut a piece that is four and five eighths by four and three eighths when it comes time to do in the deck, the front. But I'm going to go ahead with my tag and put the matting on. Like I said, I've already, oh, I've got two tags. I've already cut my matting for these ahead of time and i'm going to just ink those up oh you can buy the die from me carrie at country craft creations um okay i we have more coming i set up my big one i've got all the tag dies so the dies are made to go with all the graphic 45 tags if you have older i'm talking some of us still have the tags from five six years ago <laughs> the dies are a little off just so you know on the older tags and I bring in tags every week just to try and keep them in stock because they go, they're so nice to have the die that fits the tag. Now, if you don't have the die that fits the tag, it's okay. Just, just measure the squared area and make a square. So this is going to be the back. So I'll cut my sentiment to go in here. And you just, of course, want to measure. But I do believe my sentiment piece was three and a half by three and a half. Yes, it was. I'll cut that from my ivory cardstock in just a moment. And I know here our hardware stores are still open, so you can go get your plastic scrapers there. So this will be the front. I didn't do a lot of decorating on the tag itself because I'll use that either to make a little envelope and put money in or you can make a little envelope on here for a gift card or anything you want or you can just use it for a photo. Thank you, Sheila. And I, we wish you a happy, safe Easter also. I know that for me... It won't be but another day. <laughs> no, it's not another day. I don't mean that. I mean, well, you know, we'll just be home together. See how cute that is? So just make your own pockets for sure. But let's go ahead and cut our matting piece. But for the back, I'll go ahead from this same little piece of paper. We're getting a lot of use out of. We'll cut it at three and a half by three and a half. And again, if you don't have any of your fall paper, you can definitely use your Easter papers for this. 
And here's the opposite side. So this one happens to be the deco and stub punch. There we have room for our sentiment. And if you like to stamp, <laughs> where's my ink? I'll tell you what, <laughs> my husband even said, stop it. You can't stamp. You can't stamp all the envelopes that keep going out with our bills. <laughs> we just have a couple bills we send through the mail. And they have Wilbur on the envelope. Yep. He's been going on everything. You can see I've been using him. Look how cute. And that's all that needs. Unless you want to add some of your little stickers. You've got some really cute uh, little pumpkins and things to go on here if you want. Again. We'll add these little guys though to the top. Let's bring that one down a little bit and put our blue one at the top of our little pumpkin patch. Then you still have room for your sentiment. It's so cute. I know it looks just like him. Except for he would have eaten the scarf by now. Okay, for the top, the same two colors, the rusty, and I think I cut way too much. So let me do that in half so I don't waste it. Because we can't waste, especially now. I'm gonna pull that tight. And I'm going to... No, I didn't. I didn't have the stamp made. And um, let me see if Pam, but you know what? We are going to be having some place photo stamps here that um, have Wilbur, a little beagle on it for your place photo stamps. And we're just waiting for everything to pass by so we can get those made for everybody with Wilbur and the camera. But Pamela in our group on scrapbookers and Facebook, she sent that to me. So she maybe can share with us where she got it because it is adorable. And especially if they have other, you know, breeds, because I know not everybody here has, or maybe even likes a beagle. But isn't that cute? Oh, I love it. Love it. Love it. So let's go ahead now and, create our cover and deciding what I want on the front. Well, you also have to decide again. This was a sticker not a sticker. This was one of the cut aparts that I cut down. So I want to go ahead with a cut apart again, but we, we're going to have to probably see if it'll fit. So go ahead and if you're a card maker, you already know this. You probably get all your cut aparts on your six by six pad first of all or you cut them down you cut these apart right when you get your pad so you don't use the back side possibly or that's what i but i cut it down enough that that that's going to fit but that kind of so this is what we're going to go with I'm going to use my big cutter. Four and three eighths. So I've cut that, but you know, that's kind of boring just to have the whole thing that color. So let's go ahead and cut three quarters of an inch off. And then let's cut an eighth of an inch off. 
So what I did is I cut the full length and I cut it three quarters and I cut another inch. I mean, eighth of an inch off here. And now I have a perfect piece for piecing at the bottom. So it gives me a little bit of that fun graphics here. I did it with the pumpkins from the border strip. And this was the back of a cut apart. So there's probably a beautiful cut apart sitting back there that I just ruined, right? <laughs> now this I already knew was an inch. So I'm going to go about an inch and a quarter. And I might already have some pumpkins that'll fit in there or maybe some of the wreaths. Yeah, let's go with the wreaths. So I'll cut this at four and five eighths. Again, um, your cards are also really neat to make with your leftover pieces to match, like your album. You can make this as the gift tag with the leftover pieces. How cute is that to match your projects? And we will cover the back, but I just did that totally solid. But we're going to remeasure. The back is longer than the front, remember. Go ahead and ink everything up. Oh, this was the prettiest. This and Prima's. Prima's Fall, I, I haven't even cut into it. Thought of using it for the cards. You know what? I have this year's Prima. And last year's, I mean, the year before and this year's, I can't cut either one of the Primo ones. They were just stunning. That's all I can say. Just stunning. And I do need to get them out and make something with them. And, you know, it's kind of, no, okay. It has not been nice in the aspect that people have become sick during the virus. The virus doesn't scare me, though. As a past nurse... And my daughter working in the lab. I, I always look at things differently. So that didn't scare me. You know, just the people that did become ill, it scares me. But I've enjoyed, we've been working, but I had more time for things like this. And it will come to an end and the world will get back to being busy again. And... So I want to really try and get as many projects done as possible before that busyness starts again. Even though it doesn't, you know, we're not like maybe really busy. You notice how it affects us, though, when we feel everybody's in a hurry? It just hasn't felt that way for the last three months. So it's been kind of relaxing. <laughs> I don't know if this one's retired. You might be able to find it on. You might be able to get it on Amazon, and I can check and get some links for you. It's Deco and Stub. So the Deco and the Stub. And, well, you know, and being a nurse it helps me understand more, like, the shortage of tests. It's not really a big shortage of tests. It's just the machines to run the tests. Like, my daughter, she's a bio, well, she's got her Bachelor of Science in lab tech, it's like, she's like, mom, we have the test. It's the machines. <laughs> the machines aren't calibrated. They're so new. We can't run the test until the machines are totally calibrated. Things like that. So they're getting there. They're getting there, though. Oh, well, yeah, okay. Well, Margaret, thank you. Creative Crafty Dreamer. Yes, she's the one that told me that we needed to have a photo stamp with Wilbur and the camera. And so it was thank you to her bringing it to my attention. And it's the reason that photo stamp will come alive. <laughs> yes, think me, think me. No, I think today, because today's a beautiful sunny day. We're making cards. We're all together. So, hey, today is a great day. I had glue all over my hands. Okay, let's get back to our decorating. Now, this one. This one I didn't uh, back. I'm going to go ahead. I want to put uh, some brown behind this to make a pop. So two and three quarters by three and three quarters. I need a brown piece. 
Hi, Shotzi. That, yeah, the brown just made it pop. And you know what? We sometimes don't think about it. We're like, oh, I just can't cut another piece of paper. But when, it takes two seconds. Yeah, they do change the color of the handles. So, Pamela, Lynn did find it. And it is, we are memory keepers. Yes, uh, Margaret, it will be so different. And it'll be so cute. And she's also going to put a few kitties in there. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you found us too. Oh, hold on. I got to see warehouse. We're out of the blue tips. Any, are any of our designers out there? Okay. Well, if I put it there, it's going to cover my truck. So I'm going to move it over. We really don't want to cover the bottom of the truck. And this one I am going to put on my foam dots. I'm going to, I'm going to pop this one up. Oh, yeah, this is Deco Stub. I'll see what we can still get, if anything. Okay. You know, it can even stick over a little bit. Oh, let's let's do the back really quick before we get the front too decorative and smash any flowers. So go ahead and cut it. I'm going to cut my piece the same width. It's going to be four and five eighths, but my length is going to be five and three eighths. Just add that inch. Four and five eighths by five and three eighths. And so on the back, is going to be that beautiful scene, scenic one. There we go. Again, the back. You can put your picture on there. When we do at the when when I, at our retreats, we always exchange cards, handmade with um, either a recipe or about us. How cute would this one be? So it's actually quick and easy. Grab those graphic 45 tags. But we do make 65 of them. Again, get those. Even on your cards, you want it to look super nice. Okay, like I said, the front, I don't have any decorations. Are you consider that the front? We're going to place that in there. Then we want to go ahead and just add. So I took a milk can and a pumpkin for this one, and then just some of the dots. And again, it looks like I have some room here, so we can go a little bit long. I think I've used, but I've got some apple baskets. Okay. Again, using your foam is nice. See how you can kind of layer it underneath. Like so. Partly up on there. Ooh. Let's just cut him right in half. We'll save it for something else. So 
I'll have a little bit of that at the bottom. We do have some pumpkins left over. We have some flowers. Yep, this one will work great in, definitely. You can put this one in your albums. Ooh, there is even a beehive. I did not notice that. Oh, I wish I had more of this collection. Well, hopefully they'll come out with just as equally fabulous this fall. I'm going to stick that behind there just a hair. And let's go ahead. It's fall. It's pumpkin pie season. Always add your glue. It'll make it permanent. In fact, I'm baking a pumpkin pie for Easter tomorrow for Sunday. Now down here, got to fill in those spots, right? We need a few enamel dots. Again, glue makes them permanent. Bring out some of the turquoise. Like I said, I went through and I just found everything that was fall colored left over from years. And there you go. Easy, easy, easy. But it looks really awesome. And, you know, I didn't use, I did use a flower and some twine on that one. I mean, you definitely could, but then you'll cover up your work. But maybe we will add, let's make a smaller bow. Go with three fingers or use your bow. If you have a bow, you can just go twice. This one's a little more tricky to find your sander because the fingers are, are not even. We'll straighten it up when we get it down. Just use your thumbs as your base to hold everything. Come on, let's get those guys through. Now you can adjust. Just everything and then pull it tight. It's going to have to go there. Once it dries, then I can fan everything out. I think I've pretty much gone through the small flowers. You know, the smaller flat flowers. That's kind of cute, though. Then we've got some gold. Only thing, you, you, you can't really get this into an envelope. So you would have to just give it as is. Okay, we'll set that aside to dry. And there's your pocket card. A lot of times we think cards have to open, but they don't. So there's our pocket card. And they are ready to go. I know I love this because I I'm I sometimes look at my G45 tags. I'm like, what can I do with it? Now see this one is bigger because we I didn't cut as much off. 
I kept it longer. So they can be different sizes. And again, you can tuck your money in there, do them for graduation coming up. Our poor kids went here on our granddaughter, but um, just measure everything because there'll be different sizes each time you make it. Probably if you cut more off or less or don't. I like it with the bigger back. So there's that fall card. And now this one. I love this one. This one is our last fall card. And see this doily? This is the one I want to show you I talked about. Do you have a shop vacuum in your, your craft room? And you're going to think I'm really weird when you see this. So let me get it. Now what happened with this one, and I use it a lot. It's an old bow bunny. Oh, it's a mess. And it's a mess. And every time I use it, it's a mess. See this mess? I don't know if you guys can see this up close. It's a mess. And when I take this out, it's still going to be a mess. And I'm going to have to use something to sit here and weed it. And I don't want to weed it. I'm going to show you what I do. And you guys are going to laugh, but it's going to be loud. I can't turn the volume off. So you ready? So this is my shop vacuum hose. My shop vacuum just stays under my desk. Are you ready? I'm going to turn it on, so plug your ears. First of all, see they're all coming out? You saw it here first, the crazy one. <laughs> Here's what the deal is. I got sick and tired. You know the brush? Oh, my gosh. I ruined so many brushes because this, the things, the bristles fell out of them. And I have actually five of these dies. I wish my camera would quit that. I have five of these dies. And I love them, but they were such a pain that one day I said, I'm going to try this and it worked because I see, here's the thing. My husband works in his shop and now I just have to poke these three, these little minnow ones. My husband uses it to clean out his wood projects and stuff. And I'm like, Oh, I, we would just have to be a little careful just like that. It's clean. So it's beautiful. It's not torn up. You know how you take the roller of Brussels over and it's just a, yeah, it's done. There's hardly any mess. And now we can go on and make our beautiful card and use our beautiful doilies. Now just hold it down with one hand as you're doing it though. Okay. So this one is that six by six base that we just cut. Remember we already cut that one card out of it. So we're going to cut the six by six. And then I did use for the back a piece of the craft. And we're going to build everything here on the craft. So I'm going to put this to the side. And I cut this down to five. Hold on. I need to see what the warehouse needs. All the art glitter glue came today, so she is unboxing it. Okay. So I'm going to cut this five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. Because my card is six by six. I'm just going to go a hair shorter. Just a hair shorter. Oh, Pamela, let me tell you, it'll bring back your, it'll bring, bring back your uh, desire to use your dyes. I use it all the time now, and it just sits right. Yes, the large bottles, This all the large bottles are in the 16 and 8 ounce. 
Um, that's going to be the back. It's hard to see, but it is double layered. So now that I've cut this, I'm going to just choose the same. I mean, I'm going to go with the front and the back. This one I did the gold, but it's going to be this full piece. And I want to cut this at five and three quarters by five and three quarters. So I'm going to do the same thing I did when we cut the front of the other piece. Always keep those when you're creating cards. Well, they will no longer give you that same pain. <laughs> now, on this one, I'm going to turn it around so I get, and I'm going to actually cut off a two and a half inch piece. Then I'm going to take an eighth off of my leftover piece. These always come out different unless you totally, totally measure it. And when it comes to cards, I'm okay with that. And then see, we're going to put our... This one, like I said, was, was that gold background that we used here. And it's going to now be the backside of my pumpkins. So if you don't cut yours that way, you just want to cut a piece then that is the five and three quarters by three, five and three quarters by two and about two and five eighths. Oh, leaf shaped doilies will be nice too. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just let's adhere these down. I will be using some more twine. No, I won't be carrying that. The The problem, I'm going to tell you right now, that mold press, don't count on it being out. It's made in China. <laughs> uh, I don't carry many items from American Crafts. American Crafts have taken over just about all those companies, I have to tell you. They own We Are Memory Keepers. We Are Memory Keepers is totally made in China, and it is not right now readily available we're having a little problems with graphic 45 dies everything can be made here in the u.s and i'm really hoping i know authentique is 100 percent made in the u.s that's why they don't have a lot of these chunky embellishments i'm hoping we can get some companies picked up that will be making in the u.s but connie don't count on that mold press being out on time due to that just to give you guys heads up. Okay, let's pick out. You're going to want to pick out your cut apart. This one has some beautiful four by sixes, but they're just too big. So we're going to go back to our little guys. And I don't have very many of them left, do I? I have this, oh, well, you know what, though? This one's just amazing. So let's use it. This one, I'm going to keep the full size three by four. Oh yeah, if you want it, absolutely, Connie. Absolutely, I don't blame you. I'd wait for it too. Um, I did double mat this with the brown and then some ivory. Oh, that's the card. Let's not cut the card in half. I even measure. So it's going to be three and an eighth by four and an eighth. And I need to really look at that mold press. 
Oh, I don't think I cut this big enough. I forgot I double matted, but only cut it big enough for here, right? Okay, so let's put the ivory on the back. And I'll cut that three and a quarter by four and a quarter. I'm just doing the reverse, what I matted here. Three and a quarter by four and a quarter, and then three and an eighth by four and an eighth, and then my cut apart. Oh, the brown looks really good on there. Um, Connie, can you tell Pamela, can you tell us what the mold press does now that so that you can, uh, I know Pamela just asked, what does the mold press do? Connie's going to, I think, I hope she will tell us. She's going to tell us what the mold press will do. And I, I know that um, I know the basic gray magnets are made there. So I'm glad I'm really stocked up. But I, I live by the owner. He, like we were just talking the other night. Okay, for this little guy, if you, there, you know what we and we do carry the. I always forget to use it. You know, it's the stuff you cut it with that makes it sticky on the back. Yeah, I never have it available, so I just use my glue. You can even cut this with your score tape sheets. So I need to show you guys how to do that. You use a score tape sheet, put this on, and then you cut it, and then it makes it sticky on the back. So we probably need to do a tutorial on that, don't we? Yeah, so you can make your own Barbies. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny, Connie? We all started making our own Barbies. Okay. So there's my doily. And I'm going to put this down. But you know what? I want to put a little color behind. Let's see. This is one of the cut apart. This is a cut apart that's already been cut apart. <laughs> so I'm going to cut a two by two square. I just want to add a little additional color maybe back there. I did here. You can barely see it. I think those flowers are going that way. And I don't want to lose that placement. Yeah, they did have it at CHA, and they were showing how it works. But here's also the thing. A lot of the small stores, such as myself, and I know some of the other store owners, they don't carry... American Crafts either. American Crafts, when things come out like that, they have a tendency to give it to the big stores. The big stores. And the big online stores. And then they always seem to run out for us. So, a lot of your other scrapbook stores don't even bother. And, of course, American Crafts now... If we don't spend a thousand dollars each time, they don't want our order. Some of you I know did see that email from them that gets emails. They don't want any order under fifteen hundred dollars wholesale, and a lot of the stores cannot afford this. 
So it was just another reason not to buy. But I'm like, I live by them. You'd think they let me, but they won't let me. Unless I pay $1,500 each time. So um, they're not exactly the family friendly company. When they took Bo Bunny over, when they took Bo Bunny over, it just was sad. It was sad. We were all heartbroken. Okay, let's go back to decorating though. That's what's fun. I'm going to need to grab just a little bit more twine because I made two twine bows for there. Move the shop vacuum. Well, I'm sure your little store won't, Connie, because they'll tell you too at your little store. American Crafts doesn't want our business. They straight out said, if you're a little store and you can't, you can't, uh, you can't uh, do the volume we want. They told us straight out they don't want our business. So, a lot of the little stores said, okay. So once again, I'm just going to wrap this around four fingers. One, I think, yeah, I only did that one, one, two, two times. I didn't want it very thick. It is sad because who do you think built American Crafts? <laughs> all of us who bought Bow Bunny, Die Cuts with the View, all of those companies that they've now acquired were built because of the scrapbooker and the little store. And now they basically shut the door on the little store. Yet, we're the ones out there keeping it going. Okay, so this, you're not even really going to see it, but it's back behind here. So, and it sticks under the cart a little bit. So, I'm going to just stick it right underneath neat there um while we're just kind of playing with our our placement oh i miss bow bunny too but i still talk to our sales rep they live here by me i love bow bunny and i love um my sales wraps and so once again this one's four hi donna thanks for peeking in Oh, and I love Simple Stories. Now, Simple Stories is here in Utah. Simple Stories is family-owned, family-started. Love Ken and his wife. And they're amazing people. Right, you either carry all of American Crafts or nothing because they've made it unaffordable for small stores to survive. And again, this one is kind of hidden under there also. And then I had this left over. Found it. It was underneath the paper. <laughs> Yay. Yes. Support Butterbee Scraps. I love her. Luann is a wonderful little company. Oh, I know. Simple Stories brought on a vintage designer and they are killing it. I was just down in the warehouse this morning. Picking up our orders. Super, super nice people. So bows are the main thing with your cards. I think they have to have them. But they're a pain in the neck. <laughs> Sometimes. 
because your bows are smaller. You're right. It's always about the money. I'm loving the blue on this. Love it, love it, love it. So let's go ahead and put down our basics first, which are here at the bottom. Let's just push that up inside of those foam dots. Same with this one. Ah! Oh. Well, that's messed up. So we're just going to, that person is not in the U.S. actually, Pamela. She's over in Canada and they have dealt with her, some of the stores there. She was impersonating a Stamperia sales rep. Yes. She's not doing it anymore. So we, we actually were able to win on that one. I have more of the little bow makers coming in. They'll be here next Thursday, Connie. I just sold out of all of them. Okay. Now, uh, one thing I did here was did a lot of leaves. Love the leaves. So I'm going to do it just a little different on this one. I didn't have leaves on this side, but I also don't have the butterfly. And if you find that your leaves are too big, then you always can cut them across the bottom here. But let's go ahead and do some laying out of our leaves and what I've got left. It's always nice when everything gets used up. Also going to cut this one. I'll show you why. We're going to stick a little bit there and we're going to stick a little bit there. Oh, that looks great. I really like that. I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to cut that down instead of using both of them on this little card. That looks better. Much better. Okay. Let's lay those guys down. Well, Connie, what they were doing was they were saying they were the sales reps, especially for us in the U.S. And then that's why I stopped curing stamp period. Then they were charging an arm and a leg. And I was like, no, I can get this cheaper by bringing it in. And they also said they own Pentart, which they don't because I know uh, Bo Bunny, my, my other sales rep, still talks to the owner of Pentart over in Greece. And she did not buy it. And that's when we found out something was wrong. Okay. Leftover flowers. A little bit of a bow underneath there. So we can do some more maybe layering with the leaf. Makes it really pretty. Oh, it makes me wish fall was back. How about you guys? Just a little extra of the art glitter glue this time. And then I have this little pick. Here, these were little brown picks. But I'm going to use this one. It's definitely too long. But I want to keep them together. So we're just going to rewind that. <laughs> Shotzi, you know how much I love you. But the answer is no. <laughs> I don't even have mine made. I got to get mine. Oh, you guys, I'm, I really like this. Um, I don't have the butterfly, but the leaf just kind of helps take care of it. And these were some of the leaves we don't need. But I do need something there. I used up all my little brown flowers. Got one, oh, one with the gold looks great. What I do is when they're not very flat, I just really, really poke them down. 
flatten them out if you need to. Prima and Gravic 45 flowers kind of do, do that. But you're going to have to reform them for yourself. Hi, Bobby. We're doing great. Okay. So this, again, you could put this on an easel. This isn't even our card. So let's let that dry for a few minutes. Let's add a little uh, sign here. I used the pumpkin. And you do have, I've got an apricot basket. I have a flower basket still. I'm telling you, this line was just amazing. So we have fresh apricots. Cute, cute. And I'm not going to put the enamel dots on until I do the inside of the card, which was just again, we're just going to do some piecing and decide. This one I'm going to have open up and down. So I'm going to take, you can use, gosh, anything you want. Oh, this is six inches. So I'm going to cut this one at two inches for my whoops border which we don't want that to go crooked and I will trim it to five and seven eighths I'm gonna have to take an inch off because I messed it up So that'll be the border. Uh, this could be this could be left definitely, but I'm just going to use a piece of craft at five and seven eighths. And right now I'm just going to cut it at four. So five and seven eighths by four. I like it to be the four inches, so I'll just take now off of this guy an eighth of an inch at a time. Hi, Denise, an eighth of an inch at a time until I have the look I want. And that looks great. I'm going to go ahead and ink the edge of the craft to give it that shadowy kind of edge. which I know you probably don't see on camera. Again, I've hardly used any paper. We've used scraps. We have made two cards out of our main 12 by 12 piece. I don't want to lose my die. And then I just used that one piece for the pocket card. So, so economical. And you know, in the store, cards are four bucks a piece. And good luck finding any now. I don't even know. I haven't been in the store since March 17th. Because I've been using Instacart. Oh, I love Instacart. It tells you what stores. You just go on, you order, and the person brings it to your house. It's great. And then you don't have to go out. I think everybody's pretty safe. Hope you guys are. And again, yeah, we're going to Wilbur stamp this one. <laughs> Pamela's created this monster in me because he's wearing a scarf. He's fall. Look at this. <laughs> I love it. I don't even have to clean it. You know, I want to know why it just gets used so much. So we love a sweater weather right next to his little sweater. I live far out too. So basically... Everybody, we're an 
an acre and half acre. Hi, Mary. We're an acre, half acre away from anybody. Oh, I love my Wilbur stamp. Okay. So, you guys ready? Let's put it on. Doesn't that make a beautiful cover? When you start making these cards, you're going to be like, oh, those are so easy. I need to make more cards. Again, make sure you're definitely using something to stick it in there and move things around the glue. Now I can go ahead and dress it up with my enamel dots. I'm done. Like I said, just use what you have in your stash <clears throat> because you always have leftovers. So I'm going to use three. I need my other scissors that aren't sharp. Of the medium sized dots from here. Let's go with a brown. Kind of matches the stem. I've got burlap in there for some reason. Let's push those down for a moment. Anywhere that you kind of see an open area is where I like to put dots. I have a pair, there we go, that has a blunt end and it picks those up nicely. Yeah, these were the Echo Park, I love crafting, I'm pretty sure. Kind of blends in, but there you go. Um, I, Yes, I know you do, Shotzi. So there's our two different fall cards, different but kind of the same. So you can see they don't have to be all the same. These you're definitely going to make probably for your envelope. You would need a chunky envelope. And we need to probably do a tutorial on that too, showing how to make your envelopes with the gussets. Cute. So that is our fall cards. And we're going to make our Christmas card. And then we are done. And there was the two envelopes for fall. And there was our two little patchwork cards to show you how different but using our same paper line. So now I am ready. I'm ready. I've got my fall cards. And let's make this month's Christmas card. And you're going to notice something with the Christmas card because I took the inspiration off of the December daily album. Of what I did. Oh, I wish my camera would quit it. Okay, who took the Christmas card? Nobody. <laughs> Christmas card is six by six. So I have a piece of block that is seven and a half. I'll go ahead and cut this down to six. They're sending me another new camera to see if we can get this pixelating stopped. And then I'll put my stash away for next time. I'm just going to score it at six to make this six by six. This one is actually super easy, super fast. I had a base, so now I can make two. <laughs> 
I didn't do any double matting on this one. And then I just used the scraps. So like I said, I only had these pieces left. Was that cut apart, the barn, and this one, which is I'm going to be using this one. And I had literally the other half, which was these pieces of paper. So I'm going to cut whatever scrap you have down to five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. But what I did here, so it's going to fit perfect with just a little bit of the black border. So I'm going to cut three quarters of an inch. And then I'm going to cut, what did I do? Half inch. I did three quarters and then a half. Then I'm going to cut that to eighth of an inch off. Making this just super simple. I didn't fold that one perfectly straight. And again, this is going to flip up. So this is the one that I cut at three quarters. It's just going to sit nicely here. And this is the one I cut at half. And it will now go on this side. Just like so. Now from the black, I did cut a four by four square that's going to sit triangular, just like on our box. Um, Connie, that is true. It will cost you probably, I think it was four cents more when I mailed this or five. Yeah. If you go six by six, it's more definitely. But I usually put them inside of a gift or, you know, something like that. So yeah, this six by six card will cost you more. I cut this at four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And you see how it kind of hangs over the edge. So then you can just trim it. Yeah, so if you don't want to pay extra postage, just stick them inside of a box. I like to make six by six because... I'm one of those bigger is better people. <laughs> I don't mind this one though. I do like, I do like the three, I mean the four and a quarter by five and three quarters or four and a half by five and three. Okay. So I did trim this down now. So it barely fits and I'm making it just a little bit bigger than this one. This one was just four by four and it hid. So cut it four and a quarter by four and a quarter and trim it down as necessary. And then I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to cut the matting to go inside. Oh, is that why? So I'm going to cut this now four by four. Because that's what I'm down to with this Christmas paper is the scraps. And we're going to triangulate that and this cut apart. Now you're going to have to cut this down. And when I cut things down, I start by just taking off like a half inch, quarter of an inch. Of course, that will come off. That, that actually can be used. So I'll go ahead and take a half inch or taking a quarter of an inch off of all four sides. And we're going to see how that fits. Well, I won't be able to get as big of a border. So I'm going to take it down again. I didn't take that one down. There we go. So off of two sides, I took another quarter. And I like that fit. But I do want to mat this. I'm saving that barn. <laughs> So it looks like three and an eighth by five and an eighth will be my matting. So 
we just have a little black border so it pops. And that's that. Now all we need to do is mat ink these pages. ink our pieces and parts. Right, if you're going to send out a lot of cards, yeah. You know, you probably want to stick smaller and not so bulky so they can go in the envelope, of course. Even a three by, even just a smaller. But because in the swap groups I'm, I do and we send out boxes so I just pop them in the box and if I'm just sending a card I don't mind paying extra postage it's not usually more than a quarter to bring someone some happiness in the mail um, I know I love my handmade cards they're all over the place in fact now I just went and bought one of those great big huge blanket baskets it sits down here in my craft room and i actually put them all in that ba uh, basket now and i can go look at them because sometimes they're just fun to look at who sent a card that's pretty too that somebody actually you know when you take the time to make the card definitely increases the sentimental value over a store-bought card with somebody else's sentiment in there is how I feel. And now that I have Wilbur to put in my cards, I feel like they can be super special. <laughs> I know, I'm a nut. But if it brightens somebody's day, that's what's important. And my mother just lives in the next town. But see, she'll be receiving one tomorrow for her birthday because she's 87. She finally, I think, is she won't stay home. She doesn't have to stay home. I told her if she doesn't want to stay home. But um, she's getting a card for her birthday tomorrow and some flowers. So, oh, oh, have you, Connie? Yeah, a lot of the online delivery services are great. Oh, yeah, I don't send anything from the post office because we ship. So I just ship from here. So let's go ahead and lay down our pieces. Even a card. You can, um, Vanessa, you can order. I mean, you can go to USPS.com, print your postage, just make an account, and they'll pick it up with your mail. Don't leave home without your post. <laughs> Hi, Valerie. Yeah, just go to USPS, make your account, and print your postage. And all you need is a little scale. You can buy them from Amazon. You can even use your bat. Well, if your bathroom scale has ounces, but I doubt it. But just buy a little scale. Even the postal service sells them online. You can get just an inexpensive. Weigh it. Oh, uh, see, I think that's neat. Even to mail to your neighbor next door. Yes. The grandkids, anybody. Just to let them know you're thinking of them. Nope. You can see, I used to just do that when I was just in a swap group. You don't have to have a minimum or anything with the United States Postal Service. You just make your own personal account. Okay, so I'm, there you go. Turning it like so. Totally changes the look. And let's get our, oh no, you guys, I'm out of foam dots. I've used them all. <laughs> this one I popped up on foam. This one I'm not. I'm out of foam dots. Isn't that pretty though? Oh, 
Oh yeah, swaps can get um, expensive. People don't realize it if you are sending a heavy box. Now, if your box doesn't weigh over a pound, you still can send it first class. Okay, this one is not getting popped up on dots. But before we make the bow, I wanna go ahead and go on the inside. And once again, I was short, uh, just like so. I don't have the amount of paper left for this one. So we are going to use what we have. And hi, Wilbur. Hey, girls, be right with you. So I'm going to use this little strip. Uh, it's one and a half inches. And it is five and three fourths. Just go ahead and start sorting things. And Lexi, more of the National Scrapbook Day kits came. We're getting our National Scrapbook Day kits done. Let's see. Oh, see, that's awesome that she's 94 and doing that. So that means I want to cut a piece of white or ivory for this half because you want it to, you want to be able to see what you're writing, right? So I'm going to cut it. Four and a quarter by five and three quarters. And let's, yeah, I want to use white. Nope. Wilbur's going to start throwing his bowl. Is it down here? You might have to go off. Oh. Excuse me, guys. In those boxes, with don't let the dogs get those um, packing peanuts. Packing peanuts. Yeah, My I'm dogs eat packing peanuts. Okay, we're almost done for the day. But we got um, four cards made. We would have gotten done that faster if everything was prepared. <laughs> but once again, here's the thing. Ooh, they're fighting. Let me just change this. Just use your diaper wipes. We're going to black. Let me grab a scrap here. I can always cut that out. No, we need some more ink. There we go. I liked him in brown. He looked really cute in brown. You have created a monster, Pamela. Look at how cute. So here we have, like I said, very few stickers left. A little sentiment there. Enjoy the season. Wilbur at the bottom. So I'm just going to do basically some of the same things I did here, which was a stocking off of my, oh, I do want to add glue. This one is not, that one's popped up. So I only glued it at the top, added a stocking. And then I had some gold. I have some gold and green. I mean, some of them are almost gone, which is good. I want to use everything up that I possibly can. And then here is some of the little greenery. You might find you have little greenery. Sometimes you find things you did. Oh, see, you didn't even realize was on your collections. And that's what all these little stickers here oops, are. So I'll do the same thing. Just kind of poke those onto the side here. We're going to have a bow, so let's just bring some of that holly there. And then I'm going to use that black and white check. And I still have it in the store. It's my favorite ribbon. And for this one, I am going to use my hands because it's bigger. It, my other one doesn't go 
this big and I just wrapped this twice. So I just hold it with my thumb once. I'll make twice through the center and twist it over the top and let's tie it. Pull it tight. Paper bow would look nice too. And make your tails. This is a little bit different ribbon. It's not the cottony. It's it's a like a polyester. So I don't use a lot of hot glue anymore. And I do want to use, but I want to use E6000. And a lot of you I know cannot stand the smell of E6000. I don't use a lot of it. But I'll tell you what, it's super permanent. And your bow will dry, but you're going to have to close pin it. And let's just use up these gold dots that I have. One's going to be in the inside of the flower. This one's going to need three at the bottom. Yeah, I don't know. I've had these for years, so kind of nice to get rid of them. Ooh, look at that. I have one little red one. And then if you ever get the glue around the edge, just take a paintbrush. A cheap paintbrush. And that's another thing I want to show you before we go. Because I had a lot of people say, how do you clean your scoreboard? I'll show you here in just a second. So anywhere that you feel that you, to be honest with, that you want to get rid of your enamel dots and they look great, now's the time. Let's just start putting a few here and there. Also adds some dimension. And just like that, we're done. Yeah, the bow's going to have to sit. And there's our two carts. So that is our March. No, we're not in March. We're in April. <laughs> our April carts. So this is the paintbrush, Pamela. And all you do is I brush this out. And I hate to show this, but I actually have some hand sanitizer because I've had tons of it. And I just go through and hand sanitize this all the time or alcohol. I know it's a commodity these days. <laughs> just like so. Clean out those grooves and you're done. My scoreboard. It doesn't look clean, but it's clean. So... I picked these up at the dollar store. Actually, they're even cheaper if you just go to Lowe's. And then because it's just hand sanitizer, it'll dry and it cleans up any glue. And I clean tons of stuff with this. Now, your glue bottles. Let me see if I have one. Hey, would one of you do me a favor? Run upstairs in the kitchen and grab me a pipe cleaner out of the pantry. They're in the pantry, yeah. My, um, she's gonna run up and get me a pipe cleaner because I want to show you guys how to clean your 
glue tips because I get a lot of questions for the glue tips. Oh, stupid camera. <laughs> okay. A lot of you, I, I don't soak or clean. I don't soak these glue tips anymore. I don't want to ruin this paper either. But I'm the mat just is setting off my camera. Oh, thank you, Sylvia. So take your lid off. Get a wet wipe. First, I just you're just gonna clean off. So if you're having oozing or your tip is like stuck, you're just gonna clean that off. We're gonna take the tip off. Thank you. I need to get some pipe cleaner, is your big friend. So I have found if you soak your tips and stuff, sometimes you know how it gets gummy and makes it worse. So do this once a month. Clean that out. Just take your pipe cleaner. Oh, see, it'll start coming out. Just push it all out. Back to your pipe cleaner. Should come up through the tip. Now look at that. You can see through it. Okay. Then I take my... That is pretty messed up inside. Again, see, there it comes. Oh, I've got more. So you'll have more. If you know, come on, where's my pimple poppers out there? <laughs> They're laughing by there. This, well, hot, hot water, yes. And even if you could put it in a bag through your dishwasher, it'd be great. But you're going to find that this, that I double it in half, just fold it in half and pinch it. That's pretty clean. It didn't pull anything out. Oh, see, you can almost, if I hit the camera right, you'll see through them. Oh, you have to, you have to push it, Connie. Watch. So I'm going to twist it. There, there it comes. You're going to grab it. Sometimes I have to cut these. It's. It gets worn off. There we go. Now it's more stiff. There we go. Once you get a hold of it, you can pull it. Comes out like a caterpillar. <laughs> Look at that. Super clean. Put it back together. Look at that. Perfect. So that is the best way I have found to clean your tips. And to be honest with you, I only have to do it once, maybe a month. Once a month at the most, but also clean your pin. Nice and clean for next time. Okay, guys, that's it. I will see you on Wednesday when we're back for part three of our wedding album that we're making and yes you know what this is art glitter glue and this is artisan cardstock so do you see this i'm cleaning the glue off this is going to dry and i can still use this paper i know crazy huh but i'm not wasting this paper that will be dry here in about 15 minutes yes everybody have a great easter weekend and i will see you Oh, you just found, well, hello. I hope you join us then. I'm live every Wednesday at 11 a.m. and Friday. I do the authentic paper for authentic paper. Do you see how this artisan cardstock, this is our own cardstock. It's drying. Um, yeah, do the score. I did the scoreboard. I showed you how I clean it with the brush. Where'd you go, Pamela? <laughs> I just used my brush and hand sanitizer. clean it's done and this is almost dry i can reuse this paper we're good to go see you guys next week